It's been a while since I've gotten a really cool Christmas present, so I felt pretty lucky when the people over at Snapmaker asked me if I'd like to review the new Snapmaker 2.0 A350. I got this box a few days before Christmas, and as excited as I was to receive it, my FedEx guy was probably not feeling so giddy, as this thing weighs about 70 pounds. In this video, I'll go over the unboxing, assembly, and initial 3D print testing of the machine at default settings, and I'll cover more detailed testing, laser, and CNC functions in a future video. But before we continue, let's move this box somewhere with a bit more room. As you can see here, Snapmaker went all out on the packaging. This thing is packed beautifully. I wish Amazon would take some notes here on how to pack a box efficiently. As we look over all these components, I want to mention that aside from basic testing, in the next few videos I'd like to also demonstrate how a machine like this can be useful to someone like me who works in film production. But before we can do any of that, let's get this thing built. I want to mention this toolkit right off the bat. Every item you need to build and use this machine is included, and the tools are of great quality. They also give you extras on all the bolts and fasteners in case you're someone like me who has a tendency to drop screws and not be able to find them. Total build time here was about an hour. As I finish up the assembly, I really gotta say how well this thing is built. With craftsmanship like this, something tells me that Snapmaker is trying to gain the stigma of being the Apple or DJI of the 3D printing world. Let's power it on and see if it functions as well as it looks. Okay, well that power supply fan is a bit on the loud side, but I think I can live with it. It does take a little bit of time to boot on. Here I'm going through the self-leveling bed setup, which does require you to hone in the last point manually. Loading filament is very straightforward. I should mention this is a direct drive extruder, so you should be able to use softer specialty filament like wood PLA without breakage. I'll be testing this in the next video. For now, the one kilogram spool of black PLA that Snapmaker supplied will do. I set up the Wi-Fi connection and tried to send a print job to it using my Mac, but there's a glitch in the Mac version of Luban that prevented me from doing so. I asked Snapmaker about it, and they said it will be fixed in the next update in January. For now, I loaded a basic print job via USB. I'm printing some simple NAS servers here on Snapmaker's default normal quality settings. I didn't do a time-lapse here, as they printed pretty quickly and are a bit boring to be honest, but they did come out great aside from not wanting to release from the print mat since they were just as flexible as the mat itself. Nothing the included putty knife couldn't handle though. Now I'm going to try something with a bit more detail. This time I switched to my PC and I was able to start the job over Wi-Fi without any trouble. I'm going to let the music give you a little hint as to what I'm printing here, and if you still don't know, maybe you should jump back to the beginning and take a look at some of those ornaments on my Christmas tree for another clue.
Other than this little bit of screening on the helmet here, I'd say the Supreme Commander came out quite well. This was printed on Snapmaker's default settings with supports added, but no other fine tuning. And that brings us to the end of this video, but there's still a lot of testing to be done. I'll be using specialty PLA in the next video and jumping into the laser and CNC functions after that, so if you're interested, please like and subscribe, or follow me on social media to see more of this machine in action. Until next time, 